got Anna. Hello, Joe and Al. I love your funny and thoughtful podcast. Well, thank you, Anna. I'm a teacher in my mid-40s at a state school. I opt out of the underfunded pension system when I started the job a decade ago. Instead, I contribute to a defined contribution plan and various supplemental retirement accounts. Unfortunately, in my state, I'm ineligible to contribute to Social Security, so no pension and no Social Security. However, I do live in LCOL, low cost of living area, and I'm recently able to save more than I spend. Uh, 40k per year into retirement accounts, and I'm thinking about adjusting my portfolio to take the lack of Social Security or pension into account. What do you think are the pros and cons of these ideas? All right, Anna, she's saving forty thousand bucks a year. Yeah, that's excellent. Solid mid forties. She's gonna be just fine. <laughs> What's why are you rolling your eyes at me? I didn't roll my eyes. All I right. smiled, and then I'm looking at the rest of her question. Oh, got it. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. Uh, take a chunk of my savings each year, 10K, and put it into I bonds, creating a safe inflation protected bond ladder. Uh, number one, what do you think about that idea? What's an I bond? Inflation? An I bond? Yeah. It's like a double E bond. Double E bond? It's just a, a government bond. Okay. All right. Never heard of an I bond? I have. I yeah. just couldn't, I can't just... answer the question without knowing exactly what it is. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> oh. Uh, I guess I bonds. Or maybe it, it could put it in one. Yeah. Bonds creating a safe inflation, um, but I, I believe it's an I-bond. I think it's I-bonds. Yeah. yeah, that's what it looks like, mm-hmm. I-bonds. So I, I do believe, uh, Anna, you should have some of your money in bonds. I, I don't know that you necessarily need to buy a bond. I, I might buy a bond fund, and I might I might stay shorter term just because um, – the, when you look at the long-term rates of bonds versus stocks, you don't get much extra benefit, much extra income for a longer-term bond, and you have a lot more risk. But I do agree with the putting some in bonds, and whether it's 10000 that's about 4, 25%. That, that could be about right. Um, I disagree with that. Okay. <clears throat> you're mid-40s, Anna, um, so you're a little bit older than me. <laughs> Not much. <laughs> um. I would, I would, you got 20 years of work left. Um, I think as you get closer to retirement, you're going to need as much capital as you possibly can um, to accumulate. And so I get what you're doing here. You're saying, all right, well, here, I need a supplement for my pension and Social Security, so let me put $10,000 a year in I-bonds. I-bonds are paying, what, 2%? Um, in 20 years, I don't think that's a good idea. I think you want to continue to save the $40,000 in a globally diversified portfolio and don't segment it. Don't try to bucketize this thing. Um, you, you look for a target rate of return over 20 years. Let's say, um, what do you think, Al? Globally diversified portfolio, 20 years, call it 6.5%. Are you fine with that? Yeah, I would, I would be fine with that. Okay. And then if she does that, she's got $1.5 million. I'm assuming she has money already saved. So that's if she started today and she saved $40,000 and she got 6.5% return on that $40,000 savings per year. At the end of 40, um, 20 years, she's got that. And if I take a 4% distribution from that, that's $62,000. As a teacher, I'm guessing, um, in a, what do you make as a teacher? 80 grand? 60, 70, 80. 80. I mean, some administrators might make 100 and some. Yeah. Kind of yeah. depends on where you are in the country, too. Sure, too. And we don't know what state she's in. So, I don't know, $62,000? That's, uh, of course, the future value of that. Um, so, that's, I could say that's the future value, 20. Um, the present value of that is. Um, it's always good to do calculations on the air. Isn't <laughs> yeah, it, it is, where we can see it. Uh huh. Um, this is about forty-two thousand bucks. Can you live up for forty-two thousand um, dollars? If you're good, then then you're all set. And I that, mean, keep that, doing what you're doing and have a globally diversified. Don't try to segment. This, yeah, and you know? and that's that's well, that was assuming you don't have anything saved, saved so down. Far, but she's but in her mid forties and she's cranking pro- forty thousand. She probably has um, some cash there. So I so number I, two or, or okay. number two right. question. Okay, go ahead. Uh, use my tax deferred retirement accounts in combined short term tip funds and long term tip funds to create a short of uh, sort of liability matching strategy. Anna, you, well, I mean, are you a pension hedge fund manager? <laughs> no, I would not do that. 
Uh, she's trying to. This is what like big pensions do, and they they match ladders with liabilities, and the liability in her case would be an income stream or income payment. Um, I disagree with that strategy as well. I like the tips, though. What a tip is is a treasury-inflated protected security, Alan. Yes, that I knew. Okay. Uh, any other comments on that strategy? No, agreed. Okay. Her third uh, comment is more is better. Well, stick with the total return portfolio, but perhaps choose a more conservative allocation. Say move to 50 fixed income, 50 stocks to substitute for Social Security. Cheers. Yeah, now you're on the right And uh, thank track. you for all your work. All right. But it's yeah. t- it's, that's too conservative. And that's and that's assuming you have a twenty year threshold. Uh, yeah, yeah. If, uh, Anna, if you're retiring in the next five years, well, then then all bets are off. Then just right. ignore everything that I just said. But if you're retiring at sixty five, let's say, yeah, uh, because you're looking for a supplement of Social Security. I love the fact that you're concerned of saying, you know what, mm-hmm. I don't have Social Security. I'm not going to have a pension, but I have all these supplemental retirement accounts that lets me put forty thousand dollars in a year. Right. If you continue to do that, I think you'll be fine. Um, and it sounds like she lives in, um, what did she say? A low cost of living area. LCOL? Yep. FMO. What are you trying to say, Joe? I don't know. FOMO? Fear of missing out? Yeah, that's okay. what I meant to say. FOMO. Got it. Loco? Loco. So let me, let me just say, yeah. if, if you do have 20 years, I, I would go at a minimum 60% 60, 40, stocks. Yeah. I might do 70% stocks. I might even do 80% if I could handle the, the, the fluctuations. Volatility. Yeah. yeah. I have roughly the same time horizon. My portfolio is 100% stocks. So there you go. All right, Anna, I hope that helps. Good luck with everything. Keep pumping away. Keep saving. 